Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be talking about sysinfo. We're going to also be talking about some other things like slash proc and also bus and talk about how all of that interfaces in and works with Linux and the Linux kernel. Right after this. It's a part that I need to cover separately because it's really, it's kind of unique on how all of this works. So we're going to look at the tools that, that are used to list and manipulate devices, but we're also going to be looking at those tools for how the Linux kernel gets its data structures and be able to push that memory into user land for applications in that space to be able to pick it up and use that data for its own purposes. Some of the data is modifiable and some of it is read-only. So we'll talk about that and we're also going to be looking at USB devices and how those work. And then we'll, un we'll take a look at uh, how sysfs and slash sys slash proc and the bus structure works in a, in a little bit of detail uh, and uh, try to help explain that to you. But the first thing is uh, these are really virtual file systems for hardware and system information is what these are. So Linux uses several virtual file systems that provide uh, in-memory look at your system and that is the means that it uses to communicate with user land. So there's, there's nothing actually written to your storage device, they all sit in memory. Uh, so those virtual file systems provide you with an insight into the kernel data structures and into the system hardware that your machine is using. So SysFS, that was created by uh, Patrick uh, Mokel and it was introduced into the Linux 2.6 kernel. Uh, Patrick has a paper that he wrote way years ago called Sys, the SysFS file system. The SysFS is a file system, this is his words, the SysFS file is a file system that allows kernel subsystems to report kernel objects, object attributes, and object relationships to user space so that your applications can use those as well. SysFS is always mounted to slash sys, but you won't find a mount for it in Etsy FS tab because it gets mounted long before uh, Etsy FS tab is even called. Uh, you'll notice that I have my boot EFI, I have a recovery, I have my root file system, I have a NAS and Rep2 and Mount Home. Nowhere in here do you see uh, Sys. So wh where did that get mounted? A mount, and we can see where it is. It's right here. So these were done at the time that the f system started up. And you'll notice that right behind it is PROC as well. We'll be looking at both of those today. Uh, UDEV, we'll talk a bit about too. That's the third one down here. So yeah, let's let's talk about this one first. So it's mounted on sys. So here we are. And you'll notice that I have block, bus, class, dev, all these things are here. So if I look in block, let me just clear this for a second. These are all the devices I have on the system that are storage. So I have a number of loop devices, and then I have these two, uh, my two NVMe devices that are being used here. So if I go into one of them, you'll notice that these devices are point, these are actually just links that go to the devices directory, and I can go, let's go to it. Okay, so I should see NVMe. And then I should see NVMe 0. That's the drive. And now I should have my partitions. And there are the partitions for it right there. There's the number of sectors. Let's see if that jives with FDisk. Same. It's all the same. So that's where that information comes from that FDisk is printing. So yeah, there's, and then you could go down and you could look at all of the individual, uh, all the individual ones as well. So I could look at these and, and, and the number of sectors are right here. 
So if I looked at N1P1, I should see uh, one, let's see, 1,019,903. So let's go look at that. Same. 19903. Let's go back up here. Same. So, yeah, that's where all that information is coming from. So, we also have PROC uh, FS and slash PROC. You may find PROC FS and PROC listed in your FS tab because. Uh, there are requirements for GNOME to have those in there. So you may find those in your distribution. Uh, not always, though. Uh, they could, it could be auto-mounted just, like, um, yeah, just like SysFS is. But depending upon the distribution you're using, you may find them out. So that allows us to not only view the, the kernel structures, but it also allows some of them to be changed on the fly. And if you make changes to those data structures, the kernel picks it up and it does whatever you told it to do immediately. So yeah, if you expand the number of the maximum number of files, or you tell it that you want it to prevent uh, certain kinds of routing on your network, yeah, that takes place immediately. There's no reboot needed to have that happen. So yeah, be careful. You can also blow yourself right out of the water <laughs> with it too. Those are the parameters you can change can also be managed by the syscontrol command. And it has kind of a standard way of going after them, a little bit more organization applied around those standards so that you can not only find them, but you can you can see what the meaning is. Okay. So let's go look at proc. And remember, um, We see that right here, that proc is mounted on slash proc. Wow, what is all this? So this is a listing, proc is for process. So these are the process ID numbers, PID. And those are showing here as to each one of, each process that's running has its PID recorded and inside of that directory is all the metadata and data structures associated with handling those particular uh, processes. So out here is, the, is a system overview. So like, for example, if I were to look at, let's, let's do BMstat. This is giving a lot more information here, as you can see. It tells me the number of free pages, it just tons and tons and tons of information to help you understand what's going on with your system. So I probably at some point will go through some of this with you. Let's go look at let's go look at loan of mine. So I have some here. Uh, let's go to my let's go to the bash forty nine seventeen. Okay, now let's go in here. So this should have a command line associated with it, which would have been, what was the command line that was passed? It was just a, a dash bash. So that's just the, uh, the sudo. So yeah, so that's all it was in there. There's no script that was being run there. So uh, let's see, we can look at status. And in here it tells me that, and then we have, bunch of other stuff here like the number of threads the number of how much data so yeah there's lots of stuff here that it can tell you um, let's see there's the OOM we've used that before to see if something was getting close to getting tossed out of memory um, this should be the environment variables that are being passed to the shell And these would be syscalls that were made. Um, let's see. 
and this will tell you how much has been read, read or written. So the other one is that you may need to have to install this one. This is LS Dev, and the uh, the it, the proc info is the application uh, package that contains LS Dev as well as the one for proc info itself. But that'll give you a nice summary of your, of your system state. And then we can talk about UDEV. So UDEV, UDEV is responsible for the dynamic uh, device management that's needed for hot plugging devices. Like if I plug in a, uh, an SD card into my machine, it's UDEV that gets the signal. So how does that work? So when the kernel senses that there's a new device that's been mounted, it will trigger an event to the system D UDEV system daemon, and that daemon will then create a file entry in slash dev. Uh, and then it may mount it, it may auto mount it. It depends on what the rules say for that particular device. It'll look it up and it'll look at the rules and see what to do with it. So, yeah, it, it could mount it to the file system. Uh, and, and yeah, and some of them do that. So conversely, when a device is removed from the system, the kernel sends another event to the systemd udevd uh, service daemon and says, hey, this is gone. And so udev will then tear down the slash dev name un and it'll unmount the file system and then tear down the dev uh, declaration. So that device, like say if it mounts as SDA1, and you pull the drive back out, well, the kernel will tell the daemon, the UDEVD daemon, to, hey, you're now missing this device. So the UDEVD daemon will then unmount the file system and then removes SDA from slash dev, it, like it never existed. So the kernel assigns the device name, but they're not, they're not very useful, as I said. So... UDEV is the one that assigns something that's meaningful. Let's go look at UDEV for a moment. So in the device here, I'm going to plug in this, which is a SD card. So I'm going to plug this into my USB. You'll hear it beep. And we'll see that it this got mounted right here. So how do I find that thing? So so you'll notice there's the there's the shorthand for the PCIe uh, devices. These this just got mounted. So this just got created right here. Probably this one too, because there's you know SDA one and two. There's probably there's probably multiple partitions on that SD card, so uh, we can find out. Uh, and yes, there is. There's two of them, one and two. So yeah, this is the one that just got mounted. Let's just get them all. So you'll notice that the date and times are always the same. But this links backwards, this 8, 0, and 8, 1, should link back into the block. That's where the kernel, that's where the kernel comes from. So we have 8 colon 0, 8 colon 1, 8 colon 2, and that translates to 8 comma 0, see right here, 8 comma 1, 8 colon 1, 8 comma 2. So that's how you know where that comes from. So you ever want to know what those numbers are, that's what they refer back to is, is how this links up to the actual kernel device name. All right, so now I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to eject it. So it's gone. And I'm going to pull the drive out. Now, when I do my looky look here, you'll notice that 8 is gone. It's gone. And if I do a look out here in my main part, 
it's gone too. So it completely removed them. All gone. So that's what they mean by UDEV. That's what UDEV is doing for you. It's uh, it's setting all that up for you on, on when a device is mounted. So we'll look at, next time, we'll look at the tools and utilities for the virtual file systems. We'll also look more at USB. We'll look at message passing and what DBus does. Uh, and then we'll start to look at kernel modules. I don't know if we'll get to that all in the next video, but we'll see what we can do. So I hope you enjoyed this today on, on a look at not only the storage system, but also looking at the uh, file systems. And now I don't know if I'm going to break these up into two videos or one, but yeah, I might break them up into two because it just might be too much to try to do all at once. But I hope you enjoyed this, this series uh, today. Uh, both on the storage and also on the, uh, the virtual file systems for uh, SysFS. ProcFS, by the way, is the other one, which is actually called, and it shows up as slash proc in both the internal name and the external name.